Okay, so here we go. We're halfway through chapter five. We're going to talk about complex numbers. So I told you at the beginning of this chapter that some, some numbers that you've never seen before, you've never been taught about, there is a whole realm of numbers that we've kept secret from you for the past 15, 16, 17 years. And it comes from the fact of taking the square root of a negative number. Okay, and we're finally going to take something that you could only imagine, taking the square root of a negative number, and actually do it. So when you were in Algebra 1, when we were talking about square roots, you talked about probably figuring out what multiplies by itself to get you whatever's inside the square root symbol. Well, when you square a negative number, you can't get a negative back. So there's no way you could really take a, neg a square root of a negative number, right? If you tried to figure it out, the square root of negative 1, well, what number squared gets you negative 1? Well, 1 squared gets you positive 1. Negative 1 squared also gives you positive 1. So there really isn't 1. And you can do this with other perfect squares, like 4 and 9. You, you can't square a negative number to get you a positive, so you can't really take the square root of a negative number. However, here's what we did. So just like unicorns, we're going to go into our imagination and we're going to envision something. We're going to use the letter i to represent the square root of negative 1. And by i, we mean imaginary. So does the square root of negative 1 really exist? It actually does. We're going to use this imaginary unit called lowercase i, we just read it i, to stand for the square root of negative 1. This opens up doors to us. This enables us to solve problems that we thought we weren't able to solve before, like the square root of negative 16. What we can do now is we can rewrite that as the square root of 16 times the square root of negative 1. And since we're assuming that the square root of negative 1 can be rewritten with the letter i, that's like saying 4 times i, or 4i. Square root of negative 81, same idea. Well, we know the square root of 81 is 9, so why don't we take that negative piece out and write it as an i, and now we have 9i. Okay? Some non-perfect square examples, like the square root of negative 45. Same idea. Your first step is always going to want to be to try to eliminate that negative by rewriting it as the square root of negative 1 on its own. So the square root of 45, we have to break down into prime factors, and we get 3 times 3 times 5. That is times the square root of negative 1. We have a pair of 3's which can come out of the radical, 3 root 5, times the square root of negative 1, or 3 root 5 times i. Now, a piece of mathematical convention, we like to move the i in front of the square root symbol. So the final answer, the most appropriate way to write the answer to this problem, would be 3i times the square root of 5. We'll just read it 3i root 5. Okay? Square root of negative 200, same idea. We'll break out the negative 1. And then we can take prime factors of 200. You can use a factor tree if this is a challenge for you. 2 times 2 times 2 times 5 times 5 makes 200. And then we can look and see we have not only a pair of 2's, but a pair of 5's. So we'll write 1, 2 and 1, 5 outside the square root to denote those pairs. And then we'll leave the 2 that's left over inside the square root. So this will simplify to be 10 root 2 times the square root of negative 1, which is just i now, or 10i root 2. Okay? So now... Going back to one of the pictures that I drew for you on the very first day of school when we were talking about sets of numbers, we actually have more to look at. We've got our naturals, we've got our wholes, we've got the integers, that's all familiar to us. Then we talked about rational numbers being fractions and decimals, and irrationals being things that can't be made into fractions, like pi, e, your non-perfect squares in the radical. And then outside of all that, which is the reals, are these imaginary numbers, i, 2i, negative 3 minus 7i. Together, the real and the imaginary numbers combine to form the complex numbers. Okay? So, we can express some numbers in terms of i. First step is simplifying numbers in terms of i. So, square root of negative 5, it's just like we've done. We can take the i out, i root 5. Now we have a negative root negative 7. We're going to do the same thing we did in step 1. We're going to break it out as negative 1 times 7. 
So it's the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 7. But there's a negative that stays out in front, so it's negative i root 7 as our final answer. Number 3, same thing, except now 99 we can split up to be 3 times 3 times 11. There's a pair of 3's, so we'll write that on the outside and we get 3i root 11. Okay? Here's three more examples. Pause the video, give them a try in your notes, and when you play the video back up at this spot, I'll read the four and three answers. Um, if you're not sure how I got them, we can discuss this in class tomorrow, but I do want you to try these on your own. So pause the video now, take a couple minutes, and then when you're ready to hear the answers, start the video up again. Okay, so the square root of negative 7 is i root 7. Negative root negative 36. The square root of negative 36 is 6i, but there's a negative in front of the radical, so it's negative 6i. And then the square root of negative 160, when you take out a perfect square, you get 4i root 10. So that's just simplifying uh, radicals with some negatives. Now multiplication of complex numbers and imaginary numbers. 47i times 2, it's just like doing 47 times 2, which is 94, but there's an i in there, so it's 94i. 2i times the square root of negative 5. The first thing you want to do is you want to take that negative out of the square root of negative 5, which then becomes 2i times i root 5, which is 2i squared root 5. Now, i squared is negative 1, because you're taking the square root of negative 1 squared, and you get negative 2 root 5. Okay. Number 9, negative root negative 3 times root negative 7. Again, take your i's out first, so we get negative i root 3 for the first piece, and i root 7 for the second half. Then we'll multiply the i's together, so negative i times positive i is negative i squared, Root 3 times root 7 is root 21. Now i squared is negative 1, so the outside becomes negative negative 1, or just 1, so it's the square root of 21. Okay. To multiply imaginary numbers or an imaginary number by a real number, it's important to first express it in terms of i, any imaginary number, and then you can do your multiplication. Here's three more to try on your own. Pause them. Pause the video, rather, try them, and then come back and I'll give you the answers. Number 10, it's negative 96i. Number 11, we reduce the square root of negative 4 to be 2i, so it's 3 times 2, 3i times 2i, which is 6i squared. That should be an i squared, 6i squared, which is actually, that is incorrect. So, for the sake of not doing this video all over again, it should really be negative 6i squared, and since i squared is negative 1, it's negative 6 times negative 1, which is just 6. Okay, the answer to number 11 is just positive 6. Number 12 will be negative 12 root 10. After you multiply the negative 5 and the negative 8, you get root 40. Root 40 can be reduced to 2 root 10. And you multiply that by the negative 6 on the outside, and you get negative 12 root 10. Okay. So the next piece we need to look at is what happens when you put real and imaginary numbers together. You get these things called complex numbers, and they are all sums of the form a plus bi. a and b are real numbers, and i is our imaginary unit, our symbol for the square root of negative 1. We call the a part the real part, because that's just a real number. And we call the bi part the imaginary part because it's got a multiple of the imaginary unit i. Okay? Once you understand complex numbers, the next step is going to be to do some operations with complex numbers. So adding and subtracting. 7i plus 9i. Just think of it like if it was 7x plus 9x in Algebra 1. You combine like terms. Same thing here. 16i. You have 7i's. You add 9 more i's to it. You get 16 i's total. Okay. Number 14, now this is two complex numbers, so the way we combine two complex numbers is we add the real parts together, so negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3, and then we add the complex parts together, or rather the imaginary parts together, 6 plus negative 11i, negative 5i, so together this is negative 3 minus 5i. Okay. The next one's a subtraction problem. Easiest way to do this 
is don't forget you are subtracting this whole complex number by 2 plus 3i. So distribute that negative sign in first and make it 2 plus 3i minus 4 minus 2i. And from there we can combine like terms, negative 2, and then uh, 3i minus 2i is 1i. So negative 2 plus i is the difference of the two complex numbers in number 15. Okay, you try these. Okay, try number 17. And that combines to just 5i. I'll try 18. Pause the tape and I will give you the answer once you play back. Okay, don't forget to distribute the negatives in here. So this will become negative 5 plus 1, which is negative 4. And negative i plus 3i is 2i. Okay, the last operation I want to look at on the video, at least, is multiplication. So treat the i's like variables. So we'll distribute, we'll FOIL, we'll do all the things we've done when there were variables. But now we're dealing with this number called i. So sometimes we have to worry about some powers of i. And we're going to talk more about some other powers of i in class. But for right now, the only thing you need to worry about is the fact that i squared is negative 1. So for the first example, you've got, that should be the example is kind of blocking it, but it's negative i times 3 plus i. So we distribute that into the parentheses. You get negative 3i minus i squared. i squared is negative 1, so it's negative 3i minus negative 1, or 1, because you have the double negative, minus 3i. And remember, we like to rearrange to put the real in front. Okay, the second example is FOIL. So first, 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. Outer. 2 times negative 2i is negative 4i. Inner, 3i minus or times negative 6 is negative 18i. And then the last, we do 3i times negative 2i is negative 6i squared. We'll combine our middle like we used to do with FOIL. So we get negative 12 minus 22i. But then the other thing you got to remember is we have this i squared here, which is now going to be rewritten as negative 1. So we combine and we get negative 12 minus 22i plus 6, which combines to negative 6 minus 22i. Okay? So with that, we're done with 5, 4 complex numbers, at least some of the operations. We're going to do more with this in class, but I wanted to give you just a preview of some operations. We'll practice these operations in class. We'll look at some powers of i, and we will also look at dividing complex numbers in class and how we can use these in some quadratic equations. So with that, have a good evening. Bring any questions to class tomorrow, and we will answer them. And see you in class.